Well, good evening and welcome to uh, the Tuesday evening, June 9th edition of 7 at 7. Uh, I want to share with you just something uh, great on my heart uh, today. Uh, we've had a number of devotions uh, over the weeks on uh, just all of the struggles and craziness that's happening within this world. Uh, but tonight, I, I want to share something with you that I, I pray will encourage you and give you an eternal and better perspective. Many of you know that uh, my mentor, uh, my pastor, uh, my spiritual dad, brother, and friend, that's a whole lot of titles for one person, isn't it? Uh, man, it's been very dear to my heart and has uh, guided and loved and uh, walked with me for many years. Um, he came close to uh, passing on to his unshakable kingdom this weekend. Uh, many of you know uh, who I may be speaking of. His name is Pastor Frank, Pastor Frank Scott. He was faithfully uh, pastored and led and many led many people to Christ uh, over the years and a man of great integrity. Uh, but he almost came to uh, the end of his journey here over the weekend. Um, he had a major uh, medical event, a pulmonary embolism, along with a number of other things that happened. And uh, the doctors and nurses uh, thought they were going to lose him uh, over the weekend. And, and then when they finally were able to make some progress there, other complications happened and continued to think that he's just not going to make it. And so um, much of the initial hours of this transpired late Saturday night and early Sunday morning before our Sunday service. And um, I didn't get much sleep that night to say the least between uh, the tears and the praying. I was asking for Lord's will to be done, but I was also, also asking for the Lord to raise my pastor up uh, out of that hospital bed. And my heart was very heavy for him when we prayed on Sunday morning in the morning services. I thank the Lord that he gave me the strength to uh, get through uh, that Sunday morning because I was really struggling on the inside, uh, but the Lord gave me strength. Um, I called yesterday uh, no one could visit due to all the um, details with COVID and not allowing visitors of, of any kind. And um, on Sunday, they realized that he's actually still alive and was showing some signs of just very little improvement, but no, no guarantees. Um, and so yesterday I had the opportunity to call him. Uh, he was uh, still unconscious. And uh, the sweet nurse allowed me to speak uh, through the phone uh, into his ear to pray over him, to tell him I love him, and to uh, speak scripture uh, into his heart. And so I did that, and when I hung up, my, my heart had some um, relief just because I got to tell him I loved him one more time because of the impact he's made on my life. Earlier today, um, I received a call from... Uh, his wife, Sandy, who I also love dearly. And when she called, she was crying and, and I couldn't understand her very well at first. And I thought the worst, uh, as most of us would. And as I began to make out some of the words she was saying between the tears, I realized they were tears of joy that he had just woke up. Uh, they had already taken him off the ventilator and he was actually able to speak. Uh, the doctors and nurses had individually said over the previous 48 hours or so that um, he had no chance to survive or recover. And each of the doctors and nurses individually shared with Sandy that this was truly a miracle. They'd never seen anything like it. I'll tell you this, I don't know why the Lord brings physical healing to some. And he calls other believers home because you and I, many of us have been on both sides of the hurt and the pain of that. Uh, but some believers he brings healing to and some he calls to their unshakable kingdom. But I'm so thankful selfishly that he gave me a more time uh, with my mentor and my friend. And so this literally miraculous event that has happened uh, in someone that I love so dearly um, I want to share with you two of a number of takeaways uh, that we could go on and on about, but two things. 
if I were to title this few moments together tonight, I'd call it Miracles and Discipleship. And you would think, what do those two things have together? Uh, but as God has shown me over the years that he is a God of miracles, and um, I realize that God can do anything at any time when he wants. And what has happened in Pastor Frank's life was truly a miracle. But here's the two takeaways I want to give you. Paul said to the church in Philippi while he was in chains in prison, he said this to the church to give a better and a bigger perspective uh, to the church, to those who are believers. And here's what he said in Philippians 1, 21 through 24. He says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. You may have heard that verse before, but I hope that sinks in. Uh, in this crazy, messy life we're in where uh, things go different directions in a moment's notice as it did in pastor's health over the weekend. But Paul told the church, and he's telling you and I today through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, if we live, it's for Christ. But if we die, it's even better. I don't share this verse flippantly, but I share it with a great hope we have that whatever happens in your life and your health or in the end of our journey, to live as Christ but to die is gain. Then he goes on to say this, but if I'm to live in the flesh, this will mean a fruitful labor for me. Can you say that, that God has continued to give you and I another day of life? Can we say there's been fruitful labor uh, from our lives to share the gospel and to make disciples of others and to encourage and to minister to others? He says, for me to live on in the flesh, this will mean fruitful labor for me. And I don't know which to choose. He said he's struggling because, man, he knows he wants to serve and make disciples and share the gospel. But, man, he looks forward to his eternal reward that he was looking forward to. This is what Paul said. But he says, I'm hard-pressed from both directions, having the desire to depart and be with Christ, for that is very much better. Yet to remain on in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. And so Paul had the perspective right Lord, if you call me home, man, I really win. But Lord, if you leave me here, that's great and I'm thankful so I can continue fruitful labor uh, to others for your kingdom. I hope that's your perspective tonight. Here's what I want to share with you. In sickness, either way, true believers win. Departing to be with Christ is actually the greater reward. And sometimes we may not pray appropriately with that in perspective because we want the life of that person just as I prayed for Pastor Frank and thank the Lord he's given me uh, more time with my friend as well as his family who's so thankful today. And so either way, believers win. Departing to be with Christ is actually the greater reward, but we pray and we submit to God's will even as we mourn, as we grieve, and as we cry out to God. And I'll share with you, my friends, over the last few days, I've been crying out to God, specifically for him and also other struggles and believers and unbelievers' lives that I've been crying out to God for, for this country. But the reality is, is even in our mourning and our grief and our crying out to God, God has the best understanding for what is best for you and I and for his kingdom. Let me give you this second point as we finish here today. As we've just talked about an amazing miracle but i don't want you to miss the point of an amazing mentor who has influenced and guided me for 20 some years I'm, I'm losing track now through good times and through bad times through crying and rejoicing he's been there with me and given me a godly perspective let me tell you this my friends if you are not connected and committed to in a true discipling relationship I'm not talking about an, an occasional attendance to church or a Bible study. While those things are important, it should be a normal part of our week in Bible studies and in attendance to corporate gathering. You are missing out on one of life's most amazing parts in the Christian life. There's no place for casual Christianity in the true believer. We need to be pouring into others and we also need to have others pouring into us. While I pastor an amazing family of believers, the reality is, while I may have the title of an under-shepherd of a pastor, I continue to need people pouring into my life. 
And so for everyone in my congregation that I serve and shepherd, I call them and I call you wherever you may be living, that you need to be committed in a discipling relationship because it's one of the greatest gifts that the Christian life has to offer after Christ and the Holy Spirit himself because he works through that. Here's another point I want to give you. No matter what your age or your maturity level is in Christ, you need to be in a discipling relationship, discipling others and being discipled. Let me ask you to ask this to the Lord. Ask the Lord to place someone in your life to disciple you and then reach out to them. Don't wait for them. Ask the Lord to place someone in your life also to disciple, no matter how inadequate you feel. Another mentor of mine, who's recently, about a year, two years ago, he received his unshakable kingdom finally. He taught me something very profound. He said this. He was well into his 80s at the time, had been trained at one of the greatest seminaries in America, had been at that seminary in a time that had some of the greatest professors in the 19th and 20th century. Uh, it, was a, it was an amazing season in that seminary that I hold in high regards. And I was sitting with him over breakfast one morning, and he said, I said to him, Brother, thank you for pouring into my life and teaching me and, and sharing me the word and sharing with me uh, just practical perspectives. And here's how he responded to me. He said, discipling relationships are always a two-way street. And I wouldn't have been so astounded by this statement if, if he wasn't this older man who had this amazing seminary training, who'd been mentored by the best Christian professors in the world at that time. He was an amazing expositor of the word. He was a great administrator and leader, and he understood how even church should be led and how it should work in an amazing way. You see, I was at that time only a young guy trying to make my way through seminary, and when he told me that, I thought I had nothing to offer this giant in the faith that I was sitting across from over bacon and eggs. I thought I was only able to learn and listen to someone who was committed to Christ. He taught me otherwise, that I was encouraging and challenging and making him think, even in all of his years and his walk with the Lord. And so my challenge to you, friends, miracles still happen, but don't miss the miracle that discipleship truly makes in your life and begin to make it one of the highest priorities in your Christian life. Let me give you two scriptures as we close. 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 3, I shared this in a devotion before. You, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that's in Christ Jesus. Quit being strong in yourself. The things that you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, that he's talking to Timothy here, his disciple, he said, entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. And then he said, suffer hardship with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Are, are you learning from what you've heard in the presence of other witnesses to be faithful and able and teachable uh, to teach others as well? That needs to become one of the highest priorities in your life, my friend, no matter where you're at in your spiritual maturity or your age. And then one more verse I'll leave with you. Paul told the church at Philippi in the next chapter, chapter 2, verse 20. He was referring to Timothy, his spiritual son. And he says, for I have no one else of kindred spirit, like a family, a family spirit, who will genuinely be concerned for your welfare. There was such a discipling relationship there that Timothy was even closer than family uh, because they had learned and walked together in, in Christ. And God had blessed that discipling relationship in profound ways. Will you join in on one of the greatest gifts in the Christian life, discipleship? Will you pray with me? Father, I love you and thank you for bringing me another season to love and learn and live with my mentor and my pastor, my friend. And so, Lord, we know that there will always come a day in each of our lives when our journey here on earth will finish. And we know that to live is Christ and to die is gain. So either way we win and the greater reward is when we go to heaven to be with you for eternity. But Father, in this time, while you give us time here on earth for every person watching and listening tonight, Lord, I pray that you will burden their heart, that they will have a burning desire that comes from you to get engaged in real discipling relationships, to be on fire for the things of Christ, to share the gospel, to make disciples, and to be discipled, Lord, because it ought to be one of the highest priorities in our life. 
So, Lord, may you do a good work in each of us, and may we continue to carry the faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great night.